mental illness is stigmatized. People are afraid of it, are worried about it. People feel impotent about it. And nothing much is done to try and help these people. Stigma often comes from the fact that there isn't proper rehabilitation and, and, and rehabilitation itself can be stigmatized. People who have uh, uh, mental disabilities are left on the edge of society and this is because of taboo. This is because of fear about mental disability. But the time comes when you have to, if possible, talk about how on a case-by-case -case basis these people can become independent, become autonomous, can have training, have access to the labor market and live a normal life. We now have a duty. We have to adopt a new approach to psychiatry. We have to forget the days when people were locked up because of uh, mental illness, but we don't want them to be confined by invisible uh, walls either. No, we have to realize that we are the first generation of psychiatrists who are exploring this new route. More than 27% of adults in Europe suffer from mental ill health. Mental health problems can be both cause and consequence of social exclusion. There is a problem of stigma and self-stigmatization. These are key factors contributing to the social exclusion of people with mental health problems. And there are other sources of social exclusion and social disadvantage, including unemployment, poverty, and of course, homelessness. Our work program 2007 was focused on from exclusion to inclusion, making social inclusion a reality for people with mental health problems in the European Union. Key areas for promoting social inclusion of people with mental health problems are health and social services, education and training, employment, housing, also transport, leisure activities, of course, civil and human rights, vulnerable groups, and then uh, good practices and the national action plans on social inclusion. If you look back in uh, on human life, crazy people, mad people have always been looked on as a little bit bizarre and strange for our societies. And until 30 years ago in Italy, Uh, psychiatrists counted as, if you like, policemen as well in the madhouses and it was only in the 70s and start of the 80s that m mental people actually came into an, the, the normal hospital system. And if you look at schizophrenics, people are afraid because they that they're afraid for their own health without thinking that uh, depression, which is one of the most widespread sicknesses, is something that's very invalidating that can actually cause death, suicide. The predominating fact here is to try to understand that even the, the staggering that staggeringly public cases aren't just due to uh, mental disruptions, they're disturbances, they're sort of covered over rather than just trying to understand these problems at the roots with their family and society. If we have a mentally disturbed person put in a job or integrated into society, people stop being afraid. Uh, people who are suffering from serious mental disturbances are stigmatized. And you see that the wheel of history has turned. But at present, the wheel is at a critical point. And we have to take strategic decisions. Ignorance leads to mistreatment. A poor knowledge of the phenomenon affects the phenomenon itself and deforms it further. This is the problem. Stigmatization is a technical product, as I say, it's a technical product of Western 
psychiatry, and only in secondary terms is it as a social phenomenon. The first generation of psychiatrists in Italy who uh, uh, worked after the closure of the psychiatric hospitals, so we are a new generation. We have, uh, we, 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 not, we, we work differently to in the 50s. We've seen different phenomena from what happened in the 50s and 60s. But at the same time, we don't want to be the last generation of psychiatrists. We want to make new discoveries and develop things further. In terms of promoting mental health and stopping mental disturbances, you need to have a mental health model which is relational and with many factors. We call it a bio psychosocial model. There are five projects that help to high-risk parents to stop children's problems, uh, detection of early pregnancy threats, the production of protocols that will help take a developmental look at mental health in terms of rehabilitating people within families, a quick establishment of m mental health disruptions, di disruptive behaviour vis-à-vis others and performance based on life criteria, establishing through schools and agencies to look at possible ways of improving and treating depression, inhibition, panic, um, dependency on substances and then finally the creation of, of a monitoring uh, body as well. Mental health is the poor relative as far as illnesses uh, are concerned. It's one of those things that many people like to forget about. Uh, many people like to disregard and of course this is um, both a great shame, but it's also a, a tragedy for many people. Mental health is no different than physical health. In fact, the two many times go together. Mental health is just another illness, and we just need to cope with that. Um, there is an associated stigma, social stigma, there is exclusion, which emanates from this fact. And this is something that we need to struggle and fight to change in our society. How little, um, as a medical profession, to start with, uh, we really know about mental illness. We just don't know enough. We, 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 we don't have the basic research, the basic tools, uh, even to, to uh, use tests which are um, the acceptable tests and the useful tests to make the proper diagnosis of what is actually going on um, in our brains many times. Because we just don't know enough. And this is another aspect of what we need to do. We really need to, to uh, put more resources into research. This is, this is a very basic issue. We really need to research and find out how mental illnesses come about.